Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor. A few years ago I bought a very old and quite famous wooden sailing yacht for the price of one dollar and since then I've been rebuilding that boat from the keel up with the help of a lot of amazing people. Now this video is about a few different things but mostly focused on building the companionway steps and now this is a sort of steep staircase or ladder that is the main entrance from the deck down into the boat. It'll be built out of teak with some interesting joinery and it'll be made in several parts so that it can sort of fold out of the way to access the electrical locker underneath. Now the first step uh, is to cut out the, uh, the steps themselves uh, and the side rails out of a big board of teak. So the actual steps of the companionway stairs uh, slot into the side rails uh, into what we call a dado, which is a sort of slot that goes across the grain. Now I cut those dados with a special set of blades for the table saw uh, called a dado stack. And because the dado that I needed was a little wider than the actual uh, dado blades I have, I just used a six inch rule with some tape on it as a sort of shim so I could do the first cut and then uh, use that shim to set up the second cut uh, so that in the end all the dados are exactly the same width so it's very repeatable. Okay, so I just want to address briefly uh, our previous video, Tally Ho's Front Door, which happens to be released on the 1st of April. So I hope everyone did realise that that was an April Fool's joke. Uh, there was a lot of real content in there, but we're not cutting a big hole in the hull of the boat for a front door. I hope no one was too upset. Uh, I would like to say that pranks are a traditional and healthy part of boatyard life, I think, and I've certainly been through my fair share when I was an apprentice. Oh god, it's like upsetting to watch this, <laughs> just like knowing what it looks like. Now the beautiful door that Nick made is going to be used on the boat, but not as a front door, it's going to be somewhere else. So see if you can guess where it is and leave us a comment. Uh, now here we do have a good history of April Fool's jokes at Samson Boat Co and if you follow my other social media accounts you'll know what I mean. Uh, a couple of years ago we had the Makita sponsorship which just required us to uh, paint the boat green and change the name and then last year uh, we had the addition of a bulbous bow. So make sure you follow my Patreon or Facebook or Instagram for more content like that. So that's it really, I just wanted to address it briefly and say thanks to everyone for uh, playing along so well and having such a good sense of humour about it. We really enjoyed making the video and we had a lot of fun reading all the comments too. So I uh, hope you guys liked it as much as we did. <laughs> so I've turned my uh, big teak boards into a big pile of teak and uh, these are going to be the steps eventually and uh, these are going to be the rails on the side and I've uh, just finished all my dado cuts. So the next step is to cut the mortises which will be in line with these slots and to do that I'm going to first just uh, drill a hole with a force limit to get the router bit in there and then I'm going to use the top guide router bit 
with this jig that I made. So the jig will slot over like this. And then the guide of the router bit will be positioned so that it is guided by these pieces of ply, but also by the edges of the rebate. So those four sides there will make this shape of the mortise. So now we've got all the mortises cut in the side rails and the next step is to cut the matching tenons in the ends of the steps. And to do that I'm going to make another set of jigs. Traditionally this joinery we join we <laughs> Traditionally this joinery would have been done with hand tools, but by using jigs and routers uh, we can save a lot of time uh, and often get better tolerances uh, because the parts uh, are very easily repeatable. Because of the nature of a router and router bits being round, uh, I'm making these mortises and tenons with round corners. As well as being quicker, in this case, uh, it actually is also probably a little bit stronger because you don't have the uh, stress points of the sharp corners. So as you guys know, costs on this project have been skyrocketing recently, so I'm really pleased to say that this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Now I love working and traveling abroad, but sometimes after a hard day of boat building, all I want to do is sit back and watch one of my favorite British TV soap operas. With Surfshark VPN, I can change my virtual location to watch all my favorite shows that are normally geographically restricted. Beep. Oh, Charles, so lovely to be out on your yacht. Yes, darling, just watch out for the spray off the bow. <laughs> <laughs> As well as being useful for unblocking your streaming platforms, Surfshark VPN can also help keep all your data safe and secure from prying eyes. Right now there's a special offer of 83% off and three extra months for free. And you can get all that by using my special offer code TALLYHO and links to that will be below this video. Oh, Charles, it's so lovely to be away from Grand Uncle for a few hours. How about a smooch, my little crumpet? <laughs> well that seemed to work pretty well uh, apart from the moment when I chipped the side out of this tenon when I moved the router out of the way without waiting for the bit to stop uh, but that's not too bad uh, now the moment of truth we're going to see if these tenons fit into the mortises and um, I'm going to just use this short side piece for that. Uh, 
So that all lines up really nicely. It's a really nice tight fit. Uh, in fact, it's a little bit too tight, if anything, uh, because this tenon actually split out the tiniest bit of the grain in the side rail uh, as the tenon came all the way through. So in retrospect, it might have been better to leave the steps a little bit over length uh, and then cut the tenons a little bit over length as well. And I could put a little chamfer on the top of the tenons to help just guide them through without splitting grain out. And then I'd have to uh, plane them flush. Uh, I've already cut all the steps to pretty much their final length, so it's a bit late for that now. Um, but I think I might just modify the jig very slightly uh, so they're not quite so tight, uh, so they're not splitting grain out. But overall, I'm really happy with that. It's really satisfying when jigs work. And of course, this piece now is just, uh, I mean, that's a ridiculously strong joint. There's just not any movement at all in that. So it's going to make a really strong set of stairs. Okay, so I am working on installing the uh, framing for the set T right now uh, and the kickboard. So right now I'm just working on the supports, but we have some tongue and groove that will cover all this as well. And then a, uh, a locker for firewood that will go in that corner behind where the wood burner will go. I've been continuing my work in the saloon area, still working on the set T, and you'll notice this new piece. We have started work on the area that the wood burner is going to be sitting in. So this lower part here will have a surface on it, and the wood burner will sit here, and then there will be heat shielding around this part. And in here, we'll have a table on top of this, but this will be a little locker for firewood to be stored in. Now I am working on making the back part of the settee. This beam here is going to be uh, what supports the upright part of that. Um, so there will be supports that brace it against here that we'll build some shelves on and supports that come up from here and then we will put wood down across where I'm sitting right now and up like this and then we'll get some upholstered cushions on top of that in the future. Very good. It's looking great, George. Thanks. Honey, what are you up to? 
I am finally. Hey, look at look at me when you're talking. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Young man. Look at me when you're talking. No. What I'm doing, Leo, mm -hmm. is I'm finally installing the uh, the brackets for the diesel tanks. It's uh, there's a long process of making these beautiful aluminium. Uh, <laughs> Mounting brackets. Nice pronunciation. Right? Yeah, working on it. Um, yeah, they look really nice. Yeah, aren't they cool? So I made a little pattern for them, but then took them over to Dylan Mackay's shop next door and he welded them up for us. And now these guys allow us to um, fasten the tanks onto the build stringer and onto the frames and the deck structure and everything so the tanks are like held in, held in by all sides of the of the boat Look at that. Got peanut butter. A piece with that? Yeah. Nice. Let's give it the old. Ain't going nowhere. Give it the old tie kit. Yeah. Slap the hood. So I've now got all the tenons cut in the ends of the steps and all the mortises and rebates cut in the side rails and eventually of course this is going to be this sort of angle and the steps are going to be horizontal fit in like this. Eventually when all these are put together there's going to be roundovers on the front of all the steps and small roundovers on the corners of the side rails as well but there has to be some kind of transition from the front of the step to the front of the side rail because the step sticks out quite a bit more. And that transition is a bit complicated because essentially the front of the step is uh, plumb, it's square to the top horizontal face, uh, and the side rail is of course angled. Now I did experiment with uh, just taking the corner off and rounding it off, it didn't look very good, so what I'd like to do is do a nice concave cut that transitions from an angle on the end of the step to a square cut on the front edge of the step. And to do that, I'm going to use this big two inch cove bit with a one inch radius and this router jig or sled that I made. So the step will go in here against this angled piece here, it'll run against this face and the big cove bit will take off this corner uh, with a concave shape and the cutout will be angled on the end of the step but it'll be square on the front edge of the step or at least that's the idea so uh, let's see how it goes uh, we're a little bit worried about splitting up the grain of this teak so uh, I've got another piece which I'm going to clamp onto the front so that this piece the step itself is uh, backed up securely uh, front and back and hopefully it won't get any tear out I'm also going to do it in two stages so that we're not taking off all the material in one pass to do that in two stages uh, I've just got a little scrap piece of ply here which is going to go over the top of the fence because I don't want to adjust the final level of my route a bit too many times because I've got it exactly where I want it. Uh, this will let me take off a little bit less on the first pass and then I'll pull this ply off and take off more on the final pass. So that worked pretty well, you can see that from the end of the step 
this cut is at the same angle as the edges of the tenons here to match the side rails, but from the front edge of the step, it's a square cut. Router bit didn't get this very corner here, that's fine. That'll all come off when these corners get their roundovers. So I'm really pleased with this shape and how it's coming out. Uh, I'm gonna do the other end now, and this uh, jig that I made is uh, double-sided, so all I have to do is turn it round, turn this round, set it up again, and we'll go through that process again. So we're in the engine room again, Joe, if you just give us a, a really quick update on some of the latest projects you've been working on in here. Yeah, fuel tank plumbing. We uh, got the, see the supplies on the bottom of the tank. They're very nice Groco valves. We have a little valve on the very bottom for stripping any water out. We have a transducer here that's a pressure sensor that will go to a Maritron device that will be able to read the, tell us what the tank level is based on the pressure in the tank. Yeah, so George just put this plywood up for me here. It's of course gonna get finished with multiple coats of uh, bilge coat and epoxy and whatnot, but I'm gonna use it to mount some fuel filters on and a uh, manifold for the re uh, diesel return and the supply for the main engine and the heater. We got the return lines up here and a vent line off the corner. The vent line was a trick. I used a lot of uh, swage lock compression fittings because our clearances were so low uh, when the cockpit goes in there just wasn't room to fit hardly anything in there so the compression fittings are handy because they're very compact. <clears throat> This one's kind of neat actually, this one here, because I we wanted a dip tube for the main engine return so that the return fuel doesn't aerate the fuel when it uh, flows back into the tank. So I took a swage lock fitting and drilled the shoulder out of it very carefully using a boring tool. And uh, now we could run the dip tube all the way through it and down. So the dip tube actually comes down to right about here. Cut a hole for the ventilation fan. This will insert from the lazarette side through the bulkhead here. This is a heavy duty interim ventilation fan made by Delta T and it's gonna be sucking hot air out of the top of the engine room and spitting it into the lazarette while we're, where we'll have some vents to uh, put that air outside. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Cool, thanks Joe, it's looking really nice in here. Yeah, I'm very happy about it. So the companionway steps are being made in several different parts and that's because they have to sort of hinge and move out of the way to access the panels of the electrical locker behind them. Now how they sort of hinge and move will become clear when they get installed, uh, but for now the top part is the smallest one with just one step and that has to be shaped to um, sort of notch around the trim and the uh, companionway hatch and then the next part down sort of hinges up from that and then the bottom part, which is the longest, will just lift out of the way. So my next step is to cut the angles on the tops and bottoms of the rails and shape uh, the very top short rails to fit around the companionway.
So the companionway steps are coming along really nicely. Now this is almost all we've got time for in this video, uh, but before you go, there are usually some outtakes at the very end of my videos if you can bear to sit through my outro. Anyway, the next stage on the steps is going to be to glue them up and that'll be happening pretty soon. Uh, I'm really pleased with all the other work that's going on here. There's so many different projects going on at the moment. It's really hard to fit more than one or two uh, in each video, but I'm thinking maybe an overview video soon would be nice. Until then, thanks a lot for watching and a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has donated or otherwise supported this project. It does make a huge difference. It means that we're able to keep on doing this work and I'm able to keep on making and editing these videos. So I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. What time is it? Yeah. It's cleanup time. See, this, this is a uh, traditional technique. This guy is desperate for footage this week. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, steps, yeah. sweeping. <laughs>